Hi there. Welcome to my channel. I am Prabhjot Kaur. In today's video, we're going to learn a new architecture called Conformer. It's a convolution augmented transformer published by Google in 2020. Now, before we dive deeper into this paper, I assume that you are already familiar with the original transformer architecture. If that's not the case, I highly suggest that you familiarize yourself with the transformer architecture first and then come back to this. Because there are going to be so many terms that we use here that are borrowed from the original transformer architecture. So it will be helpful to understand that first and then come back to this. Okay. At a very high level, the conformer architecture combines convolution neural network CNN with the transformer model to come up with this new architecture that the authors called conformer. And the authors also state that this conformer architecture gave them better performance for the speech recognition task using the libri speech dataset compared to the original transformer model. So at a very high level, the conformer architecture, the conformer encoder to be specific, looks like this. So we have a feed forward module, and then we have the multi-head attention, and then we have the convolution module, again the feed forward module, and we do the layer normalization. So another thing to, un uh, to understand is that we also have these residual connections, and then we the residual connections are not uh, direct residual connections as we saw in the transformer model. What we have here is this half, it's called half step residual, which we'll study in a little bit detail. Okay, so this is at a very high level what the, what the conformer architecture looks like. We will study the details of each one of these in a little bit. But before we go there, I want to show you the transformer architecture just for the comparison's sake. So this here is a transformer encoder from the paper called Attention is All You Need. So what we have here is, so this is the input, and then we have the multi-head attention and we have the feed forward. So these are the two main blocks. And then we also have these residual connections. Residual connections are nothing, but we take the input that is going into the layer and then we add that to the output from that block. So in this case, multi-head attention, same thing. We take the input going into the feed forward and then we add that to the output of the feed forward. This is residual connections. Okay, comparing this to the conformer, we see some differences. So let's look at what those differences are. Firstly, we have the multi-head attention just like we had here. However, we, rather than having just one feed forward, we have two feed forward modules that sandwich this multi-head attention module. And also, the residual connection is not the residual connection that we had here. Here we have this something called half. So this is called half-step residual weights. So that's one difference. And then the second difference, of course, is this addition of this convolution module. So these are the different differences between the original transformer and the conformer architecture. You don't have to worry about this for now. We'll come back to this. But let's go back to the original paper and understand these sub-blocks. So the sub-blocks, again, are via the convolution module, multi-head attention, and then we have the uh, feed forward module and then they are connected in a certain way that gives us the conformer encoder. Before we go into the details of each of the subblocks, I think it's important to understand why are we combining the CNN with the transformer. So basically, the CNNs are good at exploiting the local information and the transformer model on the other hand, specifically the, uh, uh, the attention part, self-attention aspect of the transformer model is good at understanding the global context. So given that these two um, architectures, transformer and the CNNs, they are, they are e e each, one of the, each one of them is good at certain tasks. Combining them both will give us the best of both worlds. So we will have a conformer 
that is able to capture the global context through the use of transformers, multi-head attention to be specific. And then we have the CNNs that are going to give us the uh, better information on the local features. That's why that's why this conformer is is uh, better than just standalone transformer or the CNN for the speech recognition. Now let's understand each of the subblocks. I'll go with the way they're presented in the paper in the same sequence. So firstly, with the convolution module. So the convolution module that they have used is actually composed of not just one CNN layer, it's actually composed of the point-wise convolutions, and then they're using um, the linear activation, and then the uh, gated linear activation, and they have the 1D depth convolution, batch norm, and then switch activation. I'm not going to go through the details of each one of this because this is, again, something that uh, is a little bit out of scope. If I start explaining, I'm going to take hours because each one of this uh, is 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 architecture on its own so but to to summarize for here so the convolution module is actually composed of all of these layers and the activation functions so that's the convolution module and then the multi-head attention is directly from the transformer uh, model I do have a video about this on my channel where I go into the details of the multi-head attention and I suggest that you watch that if you want to understand what is multi-head attention. But the way it's used in this model is, so we, we do the normalization first, this is called pre-norm, and then we do the multi-head attention and then we apply dropout. This is used for regularization and that this forms the multi-head attention module for the conformer. Now, finally, we have the feed forward. Feed forward is nothing but a dense layer or a linear layer, but rather than just having that, we also have to do the activation functions, right? So the way that, that feed forward is used here, it's composed of, first we do, do the layer normalization, then we have a linear layer, and then we have a switch activation, and then we use a dropout, linear, linear layer, and then we have a dropout. So this is what forms a feed forward module for in the conformer. Now, another important thing to understand is how these different modules, feed forward, multi-head attention, and CNN are combined together to get a conformer architecture. So let's look at this part here in a little bit more depth. Um, the way the multi-head attention and the feed forwards are, are combined is in is in a fashion called macaron style. What we mean by that is, so there's another paper, which is right here. So this paper is called Understanding and Improving Transformer from Multi-Particle Dynamic System Point of View. Long name, but basically this paper came up with this idea that rather than using the multi-head attention and the, and the feed forward as in the original transformer if we use this style which they call macaron style because it's like you have this feed forward feed forward and then the and the multi-head attention is just sandwiched between these two feed forward so they call this macaron layer or macaron net so this paper came up with this idea and the paper that we are studying today uses this macaron style of combining the feed forward and the multi-head attention. Now, I think we can go to the slide one more time so that we put everything together. This is the original transformer architecture, the encoder portion of it to be specific. And here we have the macaron layers, which what the, the big change that they make is the how how to combine the multi-head attention and the feed forward and then we have the conformal layer which is the we have the cnn and it uses the macaron style of combining the, the feed forward and the multi-head attention and this gives us the conformer 
Again, this half is called half step residuals. They were proposed by the paper that we just saw. All right, so this is pretty much what the conformer model looks like. And the authors, uh, authors show that they, uh, similar to what we saw in the transformer model, the conformer, they, there are three versions of it, depending upon the number of parameters. It's small, medium, and large, and the number of parameters are 10 point, uh, 10 point three i believe it's in millions and then 30.7 and 118.8 million parameters so this what we are studying today conformer is an encoder in order to do the experiments using the libri speech data set the authors used conformer as an encoder and then they used decoder as well the decoder here they're just using the lstms i think we will leave that out because my goal was to uh my goal was to highlight what is the conformer architecture so let's just keep the scope narrow but if you're interested in learning more about how they applied this conformer architecture for the automatic speech recognition task then i suggest that you read this paper but for for the purposes of this video I think I want to I want to just highlight that this conformer architecture is a architecture that combines the CNN and the multi-head attention and the way it you do it, the way it does that is using this macaron style of combining the feed forwards with the multi-head attention and the convolution module so that's pretty much it for this paper now, the reason why I am presenting this paper today is because this conformer model is actually used in one of the other papers that I want to share, maybe in the next video. So that's why I wanted to present this paper first, because in order to understand how this is used in that paper, it's better that we understand what is a conformer model first. So that's all for this video. I hope I was not rushing. Um, please feel free to ask questions in the in the in the comments below i would be happy to answer those questions again if you are a subscriber to uh, then i i thank you for subscribing to my channel but if you are not a subscriber yet but you like the content please consider subscribing and i would love to ha have you as part of my channel thank you and have a nice day